Hey guys, Nick here, and nothing captures the imagination more than the idea of a memory implant. And I'm not talking about some magic chip that somehow resurrects lost memories, though I already did do a video on that, so you should probably check it out, but rather a little something extra that gives you an edge when it comes to learning new things and laying down new memories. As latest effort to build some kind of memory bridge takes form, can such a device actually work? Let's find out. <laughs> Until now, the only serious effort to build a device like this came from Ted Berger's lab at USC, and he's still in a major development phase, so I guess in the grander scheme of things, we haven't been globally exploring this concept. However, a group at Lawrenceville Livermore National Labs is now taking a more integrated approach. Now with ample funding, they aim to build multifunction electro-optical chemical neural sensor effectors. Let's take a look. The forest of neurons within a human brain communicate with flashes of electrical signals and bursts of chemical activity. How then are we to speak with neurons with devices that only stimulate or only sense? A new class of multifunctional neural devices is here, designed to sense and stimulate using both chemical and electrical signals, all fabricated within a single clinical quality device. The conversation is changing, and this time we're speaking the language of the human brain. On the electrical end, their new wafer technology will use fairly high electrode counts, and to wire everything up, new standardized multiplex connectors are also in the work. The end application is for veterans with traumatic brain injury. With over a quarter of a million of them, there exists a pretty large potential test pool. To show they're serious, the DARPA funders have also brought in Medtronic, an implant heavyweight in the industry to lend their expertise and facilities. So I guess for now it's still a go-go-go on the hardware end, but little progress seems to have been made on the most important part of the device memory. In other words, where do you put the thing and what neurons precisely do you want to control? I mean, the promise and the purpose behind the idea is clear, right? Put a device into the brain, stimulate interneurons so our brains can hopefully process information faster, store it more efficiently, and access it more quickly. So on that front, we're clear. Stimulate neurons and speed up the synapses and connections that our brains make. But as for where in the brain and which neurons to control remains unclear. We might suppose that there is a control hierarchy when it comes to brain cells. Preferred activation paths will inevitably emerge and certain parts of the brain take on more responsibility than the others. So it is pretty important to know which part of the brain you're aiming to control before you do anything. One technology that might make that a reality is the creation of 3D anatomical models of patients' brains. Using different simulation and multi-physics 3D models, it has been possible to create life-size models of the brain's extensive anatomy. But that's a video for another time. Nonetheless, it's a fairly captivating technology, and think about what it could mean for us if we could somehow boost our learning capacity and memory. It's a hopeful idea, but I think we should give it some more time before we go anywhere. And with that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.